Good morning, everyone. I'm here to film a lecture, um, an introduction to Microsoft Office. We're gonna go over terminology and some layout and everything. And then in future videos, I will actually jump into those programs and show you some of the things that we discussed. Um, all right, so let's get going. I have a PowerPoint ready and um, I will share my screen and we'll get into it. So you should see my PowerPoint screen. I'm just on slide sorter view. That's why it looks a little different than normal. Um, and so I am just going to begin um, on the first slide here. And uh, yeah. All right. So as I said, this is an introduction to Microsoft Office. I am using a Mac as always. So there will be screenshots from Mac as well as some that are from the ITC um, PDFs because those have screenshots of the Windows layouts um, and some Windows buttons and things. Most of this information can be found one-to-one -one in those PDFs. Um, and so if there is anything you wanna know more about, check out the PDFs. They are linked on the ITC page, as well as the corresponding ones are linked on the various Pearson pages. All right. So first of all, a couple disclaimers, Mac versus Microsoft. So what are the differences? There's some basic UI differences, UI being your user interface. So the layout, how you interact with it. So first of all, on a Mac, your left, um, like your closing and opening full screen buttons are on the left, okay? So upper left, you'll find your exit, uh, whereas on a Windows, it's on the right. On the ribbon, which we'll explain these terms in a moment, on the ribbon, the groups are not labeled on Mac. You'll see that in my screenshots. The expander buttons or dialog box launchers are also not available on Mac. So um, in order to get into formatting windows, there are some kind of shortcuts you have to take um, or long cuts, I suppose, because it does take longer. Um, and I will point those out to you when we get into the programs in the demos. Also, some panes will have some layout differences. So some of the settings and formatting when you open up those navigation panes, they may look a little different. There are some missing features in the Mac versions of the programs because Microsoft wants you to purchase a Microsoft system um, and at least you know install Microsoft OS. So um, because of this, um, an operating system is what I meant by OS, by the way. So because of this, there are some minor functions that they deny you. Um, the one I always think about is changing your display unit. So instead of putting in sizing in centimeters, you could switch it to inches or vice versa. On a Mac, you're kind of just stuck <laughs> with the ones that you have. Um, so I have a little link there. Of course, I will be for providing these slides to you. Um, and that links there to my Mac resources on the blog. I also just wanted to clarify that we will be talking about the desktop versions of these programs, although most of it will still be true for the freeware. So freeware is online. Um, well, it's not always online. We'll talk about freeware in detail next week. But for right now, there's this browser versus desktop office video uh, that you should check out if you're not sure whether you're using the browser freeware or the desktop commercial software. You do need the full versions of the software in order to complete these activities that are for your courses um, and complete your assignments. Um, so you do have a free license for those programs via the college. You just need to sign in with your student account. And again, I have links here um, as well as this video, which of course you can find on the blog and YouTube, et cetera, um, to clarify browser versus desktop, what the differences are, what the layouts look like, um, and also what is missing if you're using the online one, because it is not a complete program. Now that I've gone over that, I'm just going to hop on to the rest of it. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the Office Suite in general, we're going to talk about common features, um, terminology, and you know important terms. Uh, we're going to go over the layout, where things are located, and what the different screen components are. And then we're also going to talk about what functions there are for you to actually use and make your documents with. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about each of the programs. 
So what's a part of the Microsoft suite? First of all, what's a suite? A suite of programs is a collection, like a family of programs that are related. So they'll have similar layouts and user interfaces and um, similar ways to actually navigate and use the programs because they're designed by the same overall team. And you can see with the branding here that they all kind of look related as well. Mm. So the programs that we use would be Outlook, Okay, so Outlook is this one here with the O, and that is your email. You have your OneDrive, which is your cloud storage. Word, of course, Excel, and PowerPoint. This is a notes app. This is SharePoint, which is an online database. Um, this is called like Yatter or Yapper or something. <laughs> I've never used it. Um, and this one is, of course, Teams, which we use for class. So they're all related. They're all laid out really similarly. Um, other suites of programs, you could think about like the Adobe suite, which has Photoshop and InDesign and um, all of those important <laughs> kind of industry standard things for design. Um, the Microsoft suite is the industry standard for productivity, aka working in offices and making stuff. So what is Office 365 and what is Office 2019? So Office 365 is the subscription-based version of Office. So these are paid for programs, which is commercial programs. You do have to have a license, right? So you can either just buy the program just one time and just have it. Um, and then it won't update. So when a new version of Office came out, or if there were any updates, you would have to get those, um, pay for them separately. So that one would be Microsoft Office 2019, which is the current version of Office. Office 365 is the one that is provided through the school. And this is a automatically updating subscription to Office. So right now we have 2019, and if it updates, it would update within 365. So you don't have to change um, your 365 subscription. Okay. And then both of them, of course, provide you with the access to the programs that we just discussed. You can use these licenses for the programs on the freeware, right? But you can also use the freeware for free just with any Hotmail account. So the freeware again is the online one and we'll be talking about the desktop ones. Okay, a couple important things here, file types. So we're gonna be talking about three programs, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. So in Word, a file that you make is called a document and each part of the document is a page pretty straightforward for that one and the file extension so when you save a file it has a dot and then it will say the extension indicating the file type or the file format so for word the current extension is a doc x x meaning it's the newer version the older one was just doc short for document obviously for Excel, a file is called a workbook and each page of it is called a worksheet. Okay, so a worksheet is what you look at and you can open little tabs to have more than one worksheet. The um, name of the extension is XLSX, which is XL sheet and then X meaning it's the newer version. Finally, for PowerPoint, which is what I'm in now, um, it's called a slideshow. And each individual page, like what we're looking at right now, is called a slide. And the extension for that would be PPTX, which stands for PowerPoint X. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about what they actually look like when you're in there. So there's a couple important screen components that you need to know about. First of all, there is the ribbon which we're gonna look at in just a second. And the ribbon is organized into tabs and each of those tabs has buttons for tools to edit and um, design, et cetera, your documents. Or of course, your workbooks and slideshows. I'm just gonna be saying documents as a shorthand um, a lot. So know that this applies to all of them unless I otherwise specify. Quick access toolbar, we'll be pointing that out as well. 
um, and the file tab. So here is a lovely figure. It's a little blurry. I got it from the PDF um, of Word, the Word PDF um, that I mentioned before. So they've just labeled the different components here, and this is a Windows layout. So what are the important bits? First of all, the ribbon, okay, is this nice big bar here that has all the info on it or all the, the buttons to design and edit that info. Then you can see that because this is the Windows version, they're labeled. So you've got clipboard, font, paragraph, styles. And at the corner of each of these sections, there's a little button that looks like a kind of upside down L with a arrow going diagonally down. Um, and those are those expander dialog box buttons that would take you into um, a window or open up a little window that has more buttons and more options for that type of formatting. So for instance, paragraph one, you open it up, you have more paragraph formatting buttons. The quick access toolbar is just this bit at the top that you can save, undo, redo. Um, that's kind of it. <laughs> uh, so that's the quick access toolbar and that's right at the top, it's in the upper left. Then you have the title bar, which is just where it says the name of the document. Um, and you have the tabs of the ribbon, which you can see here. So this one has file, home, insert, um, draw, design, layout, reference, mailings, review, and view, because it's the word one. And then of course the file tab, which is this one on the far left, which technically is not part of the ribbon as you can kind of see by these little uh, lines. Um, and it's because when you click on the file tab, you will leave the view that allows you to edit the document and instead be um, given functionalities for the file. So saving, opening, um, updating, checking accessibility, that kind of thing. You've got a help field with the little um, light bulb is the word I was looking for there. Um, and that's the important information. You can see if you're signed in over here in the username section and down here, you can edit the way you're looking at it, how close you are to it um, and switch between the view, which is also of course available up here on the view tab. Status bar tells you like how many words you've got, how many pages you've got, um, that kind of thing. Okay, so that's the basic layout. There we go. So first of all, let's talk about the ribbon. So I have taken screenshots here. These are Mac ones and I am using dark mode. Um, so it's easier on the eyes. Um, so I've taken a screenshot here of the home tab of the ribbon for Word, Excel and PowerPoint respectively. So you can see the similarities and you can see the differences right away. So they all have the uh, clipboard section for copying and pasting. Um, they all have a font section of various uh, specificity. They all have a paragraph organizing section, again, with various amounts of buttons there. And then they have their individual um, you know, the buttons that are most common for those programs, because of course the home tab has the most commonly used pro, um, buttons on it, right? So in Word, you have styles, which we will talk about in a little more depth. Um, and then on Excel, you have your conditional formatting and your sorting and filtering for your data, as well as ways to display your data. So it can be a percent, money, um, fraction, et cetera. And for PowerPoint, you have some basic insertion and organizational um, buttons for object formatting. So the ribbon, um, the way that you'll want to remember this is it is the screen component divided into tabs, which has the main collection of tools and utilities um, for creating and configuring your documents, workbooks, and presentations or slideshows. Presentation is also a way that you could refer to the slideshow. So what tabs are there on the ribbon? You got your home tab, you got your insert, your draw and design. Those are on pretty much all of them. Then you've got layout and page layout, um, which is in Excel and Word. Um, if references and mailings, those are Word only. 
formulas and data, that would be Excel only. Um, transitions, animations, and slideshow, those ones are unique to PowerPoint. You have your review tab, your view tab, and object formatting tabs, which appear when you click on an object. Okay. Where are we going to the next one, perhaps? There we go. Okay, quick access toolbar. Um, I'm going to explain what objects are and things in a little bit. So quick access toolbar, as I said, it's the bit in the upper left above the ribbon um, where you can save, undo, redo, and that's about it. <laughs> um, you can also, you can see this one's the Mac one. Um, I can turn on my auto save because I'm attached to my online account as well. Um, so you can save everything directly into OneDrive and keep it automatically updating. Um, and there's a home button, which would take me to the homepage for the program um, and show me all the templates and things that are available. The file tab. So as we saw on the picture, it's on the far left of the ribbon. If you're on a Mac, it's not on the ribbon at all. It's above, up by the Apple button and the name of the program. And then you'll have a file, edit, et cetera, just like you would for any other program on a Mac. It's not part of the ribbon, as I said before, because when you open it, it changes the view. So you can't edit your document anymore. You're changing its attributes as far as it as a file. Um, so it's, you know, the authorship or um, compatibility and accessibility, like I said, et cetera, um, and so forth. <laughs> Um, so it has functionalities for saving, opening, exporting, printing, and so forth, and allows you to edit properties. Okay. So this is what the file tab looks like in Word on Windows, um, and it will look very similar on Excel and on PowerPoint. So when you click on it, your screen turns to look like this. You have the pane down the side um, with the major things that you can do. Um, and then there will be buttons on the main part of the screen there for you to manage and edit your document. So that's what it looks like on Windows. On a Mac, in contrast, as I said, it's just a drop down menu. <laughs> so these will look different. This is kind of the major user interface difference between the programs um, uh, across the two operating systems is this file tab area. So if you are ever working on something and you're a little confused between the Windows versus Mac, how to do the file tab stuff, just reach out. I'm happy to help you with that. Okay, navigation. So how do you move around within the document or slideshow or workbook? So a couple basics. And your insertion point, also known as your cursor, is the flashing line that indicates where you are going to insert the next thing. So if you're typing or you're putting in a picture or a table, um, it will show up where that insertion point is. Okay. The scroll bars on the side allow you to move around and look at other parts of whatever you're working on without moving that insertion point so you don't lose your space or lose your spot, I suppose I should say. Selecting and highlighting words you can do by, of course, dragging across. You can also double click and triple click to highlight areas. So double click highlights the word, triple click highlights the entire line or sentence or paragraph. And hotkeys, which we will talk about more. Um, so control home, control end. There's also um, a variety that use the directional buttons. So the arrows um, to move around in your document, but those ones do move your uh, insertion point. So what's a hotkey? A hotkey is a shortcut on the keyboard to perform whatever task. There are tons of hotkeys. There's hotkeys for pretty much anything. Um, that when you think about like 90s hacker movies where they never ever touch the mouse, um, this is kind of what they're leaning into, although those are pretty inaccurate. <laughs> um, but still, they're just type, 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 typing. Um, and it's because they're using the keyboard to navigate around their screen. So they don't need to use the mouse. Um, hotkeys, of course, will differ depending on your operating system, and sometimes you can even set up your own. Um, so that's kind of cool. 
The important buttons for hotkeys would be the ones around the bottom edges. <laughs> so you've got control. If you're on a Mac, there's command. Um, you'll have control as well. If you're on a Mac, you'll have both, but command will be the primary one if you're on a Mac and control will be the primary one for Windows. Then you've got alternate um, or option. You have function, shift, print screen if you're on a Windows. Uh, the Windows key, if you're on a Windows, looks like a little window. And of course, the tab button as well. So here's some example hotkeys. I have a hotkey cheat sheet. I have one for Windows and one for Mac. They are on the blog. I've linked them here for you to download. Um, but these are some basic ones. So undo and redo, control Z or command Z if you're on a Mac, will just undo whatever you just did. You've got select all, which is control A for all. You've got control O for open, S for save, C for copy, X for cut, and V for paste. Kind of a weird one, but um, it's not control P because control P is print. So um, if you are interested in hotkeys, which I suggest you learn at least the ones that are common to you. Um, I use hotkeys constantly um, because it really can speed things up for you. So I would suggest downloading a copy of my hotkeys cheat sheet for whichever operating system you're using. And um, you can kind of stick it next to your computer and slowly learn and integrate those into your daily use. All right, we're gonna talk about formatting now. So we're gonna get into more detail. Now we've talked about kind of the layout and general terms. Um, we're gonna look at how you actually use these programs. So first of all, what is an object? An object is anything inserted that you don't just type on in, okay? So if you can click on something and it's just flashing all immediately and you just type, 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 it's not an object, okay? So in Word and in Excel, anything you've typed in just is. In PowerPoint, everything is an object except for audio because audio doesn't take up any visual space on the slide and therefore it's not an object. Um, but everything else is an object. Um, so I have set up this little animation. So you've got text boxes, you have images, charts, as you can see, tables, shapes, and icons. Boom. <laughs> I didn't put a video on the slide, but still here you are. So as you can see, all of these things are objects. If I click on them um, when I'm in the program itself, I'll get extra tabs on my ribbon to format these objects. And you can see I have formatted some of them. I've changed their color, um, put a border and things on the text box. I cut this cat's head out of the picture <laughs> and so on. So these are all objects. Object formatting. So what can you do to the different objects? Shapes and text boxes, you can edit, um, like when you click on these and you get your extra formatting tabs, these will have size and position. So you can put in, you know, how big you want it to be, where you want it to be on your ruler vertically and horizontally. You can edit the fill color. You can put on effects like shadows or 3D effects, gradient effects, um, translucencies. You can do the same with the outline as well as the fill. So you can do the thickness, the style of the outline, the color. Um, you can change, of course, the all the effects on the text itself. So you can give that color, different sizes, different fonts, um, effects like shadow and 3D. And of course you can do the alignment. So does it go left, right, centered um, and arrangement, which is, is it in front of or behind the other objects on the slide or on the page um, so that they show up on top of each other? You know, is, is the text on top of a picture for instance? For pictures, um, pretty similar. So you can do size, position, colors and style effects that are built in. They have some built-in frame styles. Um, you can crop them and resize it. You can remove the background like I did with that little kitten picture. Um, and of course, align and arrange them. For tables, again, you can of course edit the font within them. You can do the color and styles for the fill and for the borders. Um, and you can format the cell contents, which we'll talk more about when we get to the Excel section. 
For charts, you can do, uh, well, first of all, it comes with Excel cons compatibility, which is pretty cool. So you can make a table in Excel with data, um, create that chart, and then attach that chart to PowerPoint or Word to display it. Um, and then you can just edit it within Excel, which is pretty cool. Um, and of course, you can design the chart. So the colors and what fonts you want to use, all that classic stuff um, that goes for smart art as well. For videos and audio, you can crop the size and length, and um, you can put on visual effects for the videos. Um, there's lots of stuff you can do. So what's a template? This is important terminology. So a template is a pre-formatted, pre-built page, slide, or worksheet, um, and then you put your data into it. Oh, I've got some sunshine on my face. So um, you put your data into it. So it'll be already built, looking nice, already formatted, um, maybe have its different sections, you know, and you just type into those sections or change the picture or whatever. Um, for assignments in class, you can use templates in PowerPoint because kind of everything is a template in PowerPoint. You'll see this in a moment. Um, but for Excel and Word assignments, you are not to use them unless you're in office skills, um, in which case you are welcome to use them for your assignment booklet. But for ITC and the Pearson courses, no templates. <laughs> uh, you got to do it from scratch. So on a template, you have object placeholders. So text boxes, um, image placeholders, and so forth. And those placeholders, you can change what they contain. So you can switch it from a text box to an image holder, for instance. Um, you can delete them entirely. You can move them around, resize them, um, all of it. However, this can be difficult to do, particularly in Word. Um, in PowerPoint, the ability to be flexible with your templates, very easy. In Word, they tend to use tables for the templates. Um, and often templates are created just by other users as well. So it's not necessarily created by Microsoft itself. Um, and that can be then difficult to modify. Like if you have text that's a little bit longer than the box they gave you, sometimes you can't really change it without it messing up everything else. So I kind of stay away from them with Word, um, but they can be useful as a starting point in Excel. And they're definitely something that I use all the time in PowerPoint. So what is a template in Word? When you open up Office, if you open it up without opening a file first, you come to this screen, which is for new file creation. Um, you'll see a blank document and a tour option, and then you'll see templates. So the ones that are showing up for me, um, there's some resumes and cover letters because I edit resumes and cover letters a lot for one of my courses. So those are right up the top. Go to calendar. Um, it does kind of change which ones are shown to you as you use other ones um, and save templates and styles. Um, so as you can see, they're already set up. Uh, if you kind of look at this one, there's a lines on it, there's um, sections, you've got icons and everything. So you just would type in your own information on top of the placeholder text. In Word, the presets that you are allowed to use and that I, in fact, I encourage you to use are styles. So this is found on the home tab of the ribbon once you've actually started your document. The design and what they look like can be edited directly from the styles menu. As you can see, you can create a brand new style or you can modify the styles that exist. The styles that show will depend on the theme that you've chosen for your document, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, but part of the reason I really like styles is one, obviously it's super convenient to just do your formatting one time and then apply it everywhere you need that format. Um, so that's great, nice and convenient. It also though really helps if you want to create anything that is hyperlinked. Um, so things that can talk to itself. Um, you should see my video on ref the references tab for more information on that. Um, but what I really like about styles is because they have names like heading, body, emphasis, quote, 
caption and so on. Um, when an e-reader or a computer reader um, reads it, it has more information about the structure of the document. So it knows when to pause and knows when a new section begins. Um, so it can read that information and give the person who is using that e-reader um, more information. So that's really great. It also automatically builds you an outline that you can then view and click on and it'll jump you straight to the page. Um, so it, as I said, hyperlinks it to itself. So. Styles is great, really suggest them. You can just create your own from scratch um, and then use them every time. I have done this with my um, handouts and things. You'll be able to see with my headings that show there, um, my heading one and so forth. Um, and that, that will match um, your things like your uh, study guides and things will match the headings that I've made. So in Excel, a template is very similar to in Word. So it is a pre-built worksheet um, that already has the, well, everything kind of set for you, as you can see. So like personal budget, there's already built in charts. You just need to put your numbers in, okay? Um, and they can be quite fancy, the Excel ones. Um, in real life, using an Excel um, kind of, preset template can be really useful and quick. Just grab a budget and make your budget. Um, but for class, I do need you to do it from a blank one um, so that you learn how to create the basic formatting on your own. All right, PowerPoint. So for PowerPoint, it's different. These are not templates. These are called themes. And what that does is it gives you a set of templates then. So you'll have a title, a section header, a title and content, a picture and title, a title and subtitle, um, a text box and picture, you know, some basic layouts, but they will have different design elements and colors and things based on the theme you choose. You can also, of course, create your own themes um, and design those, which I love doing. I love editing um, a theme and making it unique um, and then saving that theme. So templates um, for PowerPoint are here. They're on the home tabs so once you've opened your document. Um, so you can see they are themed. They have this kind of color matching uh, to them. And you can see that there's the standard uh, theme that I'd chosen, which was integral. And then you can see the ITC lecture, which is a theme that I've saved um, and is the one that I'm using to make this as well as other ITC lectures, obviously. Um, so these would be my templates. I would click on what kind of template I want, what kind of slide I want, and then I can edit from there. So what is theme? As I said, theme is a design preset that goes across the whole document or the entire file or however you wanna say it. So for Word, I've got Word at the top here, the themes button is right there. You drop down and you'll see the names of the themes like you would in the PowerPoint. Then you have all of these presets here for preset kind of just layouts. Um, and kind of mini templates. And these will update based on the theme that you choose, the colors for the theme that you choose and the fonts that you choose. So you can set all of this kind of stuff and these design settings will apply to the entire document. On Excel, you again have your themes, colors and fonts, um, but they don't have a design tab. They just put it on the page layout tab where then you also have your layout options like margins and orientation, how to print it. For PowerPoint, as I pointed out before, the design tab um, has all of the presets. These are ones that I've created here. Um, and these are ones that it came with. And then you can uh, change the variety, edit the size of the slide. Um, and if you do click into here, you will be given options for color and font as well um, over here. Um, yeah, so that, that's a theme. A theme is the overall design and a template is a like per page, per slide, per worksheet, pre-organized, um, formatted page. Okay, 
the home tab. So now we're getting to the actual tabs on the ribbon. I'm gonna go through them kind of left to right. Um, I'm gonna go through the ones that are shared and then I will talk a little bit about each program and the parts of the ribbon available for them. So the home tab. This is the one we saw on my example slide where I was defining the ribbon. It has the most frequently used tools per program. So for Word, it's gonna have the most frequently things for Word, which would be obviously text and formatting, edit, um, text and paragraph formatting. Excel has your cell and table formatting, your sorting for your data. Um, PowerPoint has object insertion and shape formatting. So this again was shown to you a couple of slides back. It always has clipboard, font, and paragraphs. So I'm going to talk about those three in more detail. First of all, your clipboard is your copy paste tool. So when you copy something, it is saved to the clipboard and then you can paste from the clipboard. So that's why the little image is a clipboard and a document. Um, so what are the options here? First of all is cutting. Cutting means that you remove the object from its original location. You copy it to your clipboard and then you can paste it somewhere else. Copying um, keeps the original one, makes a cop and saves a copy to the clipboard. So it doesn't remove the original one. And then of course you can paste it somewhere. There's also duplicate, which works by immediately duplicating an object right on top of it. Um, I use this primarily in PowerPoint, um, not in the other ones, but it, in theory would work. Then you have Format Painter, which is the one that looks like a little paintbrush. Um, and this, it copies the formatting that you've set to different objects. So you can format one, uh, copy it with Format Painter, and then paint it onto other things, and it will format those to match. And then finally, of course, you have your paste function. Um, you can choose whether you just keep the text, whether you keep the source formatting, match the destination formatting, and so on and so forth. So you have some options for how you want to paste it in um, and what part of it you want to paste if it's um, got settings as well as content. Um, I've also given you, again, a reminder of the hotkeys, so control X to cut. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. All right, the font group. So this is all the stuff you can do um, from the just standard font menu, um, at least on Excel uh, or sorry, on Word here. And then if you go into the full font window by clicking on the expander button or for um, if you're on Mac, you would need to click on one of the settings and then go to more settings and then they'll open it. Um, these are things you can do. So first of all, you can change the font, right? You can change it to whatever kind of font you want. There's tons of different ones. You can download more fonts from the internet. Um, I love fonts. <laughs> That's something I used to do a lot as like a kid. I used to download fun fonts from the internet. That was uh, a real big hobby. Me and my friends would like send each other cool fonts anyway. Um, change the size, make it bigger or smaller. Change the colors, of course. You can make it bold, italicized, and underlined. You can cross things out. You can do superscript. So superscript is the one where it's up at the top. So think about like if you're going first, number one, then ST. Um, that little ST would be in superscript up the top. And then subscript means that it goes down the bottom. Okay, so I've given those examples there. Kerning is the space between um, letters. Uh, usually I wouldn't mess with this. <laughs> it's kind of standardized for the varying fonts, but you can um, mess with it a little bit, particularly in PowerPoint. You can also choose your capitalization. So you can do small caps, all caps, all lowercase, toggle, um, all of that kind of thing. And of course you can choose highlight colors as well as font colors. The paragraph formatting. So paragraph formatting is for the paragraph. You can do lists. So you can either do those as bullet lists, numbered lists, or multi-level lists. You can use the increase and decrease indent, which would change the level of your list or the level of your paragraph. So level one is the normal left margin. One increased indent takes you level two. Three takes you level three, two. You're always one ahead. Two over takes you to level three. Okay. 
Um, horizontal alignment, so left, right, centered, and fully justified, meaning that it touches both sides, and you can see those right here. Okay, this is the Mac one, and this is the Windows, but pretty much the same. Um, and then depending on which program you're in, you may have uh, columns, um, text direction, so flipping the text around, um, vertical alignment, so whether it's at the top of a cell or a text box, bottom or middle, um, non-printing characters, which in Word, it's this one that has the kind of backwards P, really useful tool. When you click on that, you can see your non-printing characters, so your spaces, so enters, tabs, um, the space bar, uh, column change, section difference, um, page breaks, all of that kind of thing would be displayed for you and it would make editing so much easier. So that's the paragraph tab or paragraph group on the tab. Then you have your insert tab. Um, so look at all the things you can insert. <laughs> so of course, first of all, you've got your page breaks that they give you in Word. Um, then for uh, PowerPoint, they have a new slide. Then you've got tables. Okay, then you're going to have pictures um, and shapes and charts. You can see, obviously, for Excel, there's a bunch more um, buttons about charts and types of charts and um, things you can do with your data there. Whereas for PowerPoint, there's more about, you know, you've got your text boxes, your objects, your date and your time. Um, and for Word, you have, you know, a lot fewer things in the chart and smart art section. I mean, you can still get to them, right, with the drop down, um, but there's giving more space over here to um, basic stuff. So page number and header footer, that kind of thing. So depending on the program, you can insert different things. In theory, you can insert the same things to all of them. It might just be a little more hidden um, as opposed to just being bang on the ribbon for you. Um, typically, depending on whichever program you're in, you're going to find the thing that you want easily because it'll be more um, fine-tuned for that program. So that's the insert tab. When I do the demos with these programs, I will, of course, show you in more detail how to insert things and some of the items that you can insert. But of course, if you go back a few slides, you can see my objects um, that I inserted. Okay, the draw tab. So I'm not gonna go into this in much detail. Um, this is available if you have a trackpad or touch screen. Um, and of course, if you have a proper drawing pad and a pen, you can use this as well. Um, so it's just a very basic draw. You can use different pens um, and just very basically uh, mark up the document. As I said, I'm not gonna go into this too much. We don't use it um, in any of the assignments. Um, but it does exist if you are interested. The design tab, we've already gone over because we've talked about themes and templates, um, but the design tab would be next on the left to right. Um, and it is in Word and PowerPoint. So as we mentioned before, Excel would have it on the page layout. They have some information and options for design and theme. Um, but in Word and PowerPoint, which are more visual, I guess, uh, they have full tabs for the design and theme. Layout tab. So in PowerPoint, slide layout is available on the home tab next to the new slide button. You can pick your layout there. In Word and Excel, you have layout tabs, which give you options for things like columns, margins, um, which way the paper goes, whether it's portrait or landscape, um, whether it's indented, uh, how big the page is, what kind of page you're printing on, um, all of it, <laughs> as well as you can see some on, um, options like the selection pane and alignment for laying out objects. Um, and of course, on the Excel one, you've got the tiles and uh, setup section where you can kind of look at how it's going to print. Yeah, so that's the layout tab. The review tab. So the review tab allows you to comment and make changes and track those changes. I have a full video, as you can see, on digital editing in Word. Um, 
please check it out. <laughs> and I, in that, I show you how to comment, how to track your changes, how to accept changes, reject them. Um, yeah, it's not a very long video. Please check that out. And I will show you a full demo of the review tab there. All right, the view tab, finally, it's the last one over before the questions and any formatting tabs. So the view tab is how you are actually looking at your document on your screen. So you have options, um, you know, there'll always be a normal view and that'll be the default. Then you can have a print view, um, web layout on Word. For PowerPoint, you've got your slide sorter, which is the one I had open when we first started here. Reading view, you can look at it with the notes so you can see your um, speaker's notes at the same time. There's tons of views in PowerPoint. Um, in Excel, there's a couple basic views and then there's the freezing panes, um, which is really useful. So freezing panes and columns, et cetera, means that if you go onto a different sheet or if you scroll down really far, those headers would still be there. So those are useful. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about Word now. So what is unique to Word? First of all, the References tab. So References tab is doing citations, um, footnotes, endnotes, and tables of contents, that kind of stuff. So I have my information here for you. If you don't know what a citation is, please watch the Intro to Citations lecture. And I go over how to cite and reference in Word in this video here. And I've also linked the academic integrity video if you're interested in citations and academic integrity in general. So if you wanna know more about this tab, please watch the citations and referencing using Word video. All right, the mailings tab. I'm not gonna talk about this one in depth either. Um, this is not a very commonly used tab. Basically it's for creating um, many copies of letters. So you create multiple copies and it fills in your fields for you. So um, who are you sending it to? What's their company? What's their address? Um, whatever other fields you have. And um, it makes then multiple copies of those letters with those fields completed. I do this in the Word activities for chapter three. I have linked both here, both the assignment version and the exam version. Um, and I have linked them to start at the point where I start the mail merge so you can follow along. Okay. Excel. There's a little bit more to talk about with Excel and introing it, so let's get into it. First of all, some terminology that you may not be aware of when you first start Excel. The first term is absolute. This is a type of reference. <laughs> so already we've got two words we don't know. So this is a type of reference, and we we're going to talk about this one in more detail on a further slide. Next is argument. So an argument is part of a formula in Excel. So a formula, again, a word we're gonna discuss more, is just math, right? So um, A plus B is a formula. And an argument is a part of that formula. So um, A plus B multiplied by C, A plus B would be one argument and then multiplying it by C. Arguments in Excel are organized or separated by commas. Um, and when we do the Excel demo, I will be showing you all of this more practically. Um, so don't stress too much if it seems confusing at the minute. So an argument is just a part of a formula separated out by commas. An array is a range of cells. So the little squares, it's a range of cells um, in Excel, and then you can use that array within your formula. An array is written with a colon in the middle, so you have the top most left uh, value and the bottom most right value, and the array would be, you'd put that one, a colon, and then the other, and it would cover everything in between. So it's a range of cells, and you just put the first and last with a colon in between. What's a cell? Well, a cell is one of the little boxes 
in Excel and you put your values into those individual cells. A column is the vertical group of cells, okay? Whereas a row is the horizontal grouping of cells. In Excel, a column is indicated by a letter, so A, B, C, and so on. And a row is indicated by a number, one, two, three, four, and so on. A formula, as I said, is just basic math. And a function is a pre-built formula, so kind of like a template, that you put your values into. And these allow you to do more complicated math much faster because you don't need to be doing all the algebra and all the figuring it out. You just put in your information and Excel, the big calculator, will do it for you. So um, functions have names, like uh, some basic examples. Sum is obviously adds things together. Um, average, finds an average, <laughs> highest, lowest, uh, so min and max. Um, there's lookup ones, there's comparison, there's logic, there's finance, there's tons of different functions. So they're pre-built and you just need to put your data into them and it will do the math for you. And in these functions, you'll see the different arguments labeled and separated out by commas. A formula is just math that you did without using a function. Both of them start with equal signs. So when you enter it in, you put an equals and then you do your math and that tells it that it is in fact a formula or function um, as opposed to just a value to display. Okay, and a reference. So references are the names of the cell. So if a cell um, is named after its column, so the column letter, and its row number. And so you combine those and that is the cell reference, okay? So the reference for the top one would be A1, right? Now, relative, this is again, a type of reference and we'll talk about this more on a future slide along with absolute. We've already mentioned rows. Row is just the horizontal, whereas column is vertical, right? table. So once you format things as a table, it's a collection of cells that have been formatted together um, and interact with each other and have headers and so forth. And you have workbook versus worksheet, which I mentioned a little bit in file type. So workbook is the whole file and worksheet is each page. Okay, in Excel, you can have text values or numerical values. And I have screenshotted this information from the Excel uh, PDF. So by default, when you put text into a cell, it's gonna align on the left, just the way it would in Word or PowerPoint because we read left to right in English. Numbers, dates, everything else is aligned to the right, okay? So if it's numbers, it's on the right. If it's text, it's on the left. Um, and numbers do include percent, time, date, currency, all that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I, there's some basics here uh, that you can have a look at uh, if you're interested. Okay, I'm gonna move on. There we go. Oops. Okay, Excel navigation. Um, I wanted to show you this lovely little chart again from the handout, uh, the PDF. Because in Excel, a big part of it is copying your formulas and your functions to other areas so that it can do the same math to different values. So for instance, you've got a table and you have all the different locations and you wanna know um, how many times they had a fire drill, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and so you would do the formula for the first location and then you would copy it down and it would do that same math for all the other locations that you've already input, okay? So these um, ways of using your mouse are really important. So the first thing, when you wanna select the cell but not copy it, um, you want your pointer to look like that white plus, okay? Um, when you are typing in a cell, it should look like an insertion point, so the flashing line. If you wanna copy a cell to somewhere else, so kind of cut it and put it elsewhere, um, it will look like a normal mouse, but with a plus as well. 
The important one is the autofilling cells, which is copying the cell data down. And we'll talk more about autofill in a minute. Um, so for this one in the cell, you can see how there's a little green box at the bottom. You want to hover over it till your mouse turns into this black crosshairs, the black cross. Um, and that is what you'll use to pull it down. For selecting rows and columns, you'll just click on them um, and it will turn to an arrow. And of course, like with the other programs, you can drag the edges to resize the windows. All right, cell referencing. So this is important. Make sure you've got your memory hats on. All right, cell reference. So we mentioned that a reference is the name of the cell, and this is the combination of their column letter and their row number. Okay. A relative reference is a normal reference. Okay, so references are relative by default. And these references then change when you move or copy the formula or function that they're contained in. So remember, as I said on the previous slide, a big part of Excel is doing the math for one item and then copying it down to fill in the rest of the items with the same math, um, but with their own values. The way it does this is by automatically changing those references when you drag it down. So if I'm in row one and I drag it down to row three, all the references that I've put in would also increase by two rows, right? So one, two, three, all the references would increase by two, three, like that, okay? Um, so I've given the example of A1 to B3 there, which is one column over and two down. So wherever you paste it, it will change relative to wherever you've moved it, okay? This is usually what you want. <laughs> this is usually um, useful and how Excel works and functions. However, sometimes you do not want that reference to change. Um, so maybe you have an array. So remember like a range of cells. So maybe you have an array and you want to be looking at that array every time. You don't want it to move around when you paste it down. You want the other parts to move maybe, but you don't want that array to change. You always wanna to go to the same array. So you would need to lock that reference in place. And this is called making it absolute. You can do this on your keyboard um, with the F4 button, function four, or you can type it in manually by using the dollar sign on the keyboard. It's displayed as a dollar sign before the locked part of the reference. So you lock the column, dollar sign column, and you lock the row, dollar sign row. Then you have mixed references which when you only lock either the column or the row instead of both. Okay, so if you just want to lock that column, you're moving around, but you want it to always go back to column A, let's say you would lock the A, and if you want it to lock to the row, you would lock the row, and I've given you the example on screen there. Um, again, making it absolute, you use the F4 or function four button. You may need to hold down the function button on your keyboard at the same time, um, which is the one that has an FN on it. Okay, cell formatting. So you can display your format uh, or display your cell information in different ways. So as I mentioned, text is automatically aligned to the left and numbers and dates are automatically aligned to the right. You can of course change that, change the alignment, um, left, right, center, justify, just like you could for a paragraph. You can also adjust the vertical alignment in cells because sometimes you can make a cell bigger and so you might want to decide whether it's the top middle or bottom of that cell so vertical and horizontal alignment um, i've shown you here in my um screenshots uh two important things so first of all you have your number formatting so this is not going to change the way the cell looks but it is going to change the way the cell information is displayed so you've got your basic on the ribbon on home ribbon, and then you have the drop down menu here. So um, general is just normal, just whatever you type in. Then there's number, of course, currency and accounting. Um, currency and accounting are very similar. Um, accounting just <laughs> allows, uh, it lines up the decimal points um, so that you can visually uh, look at it as though you were doing the math on paper. Got dates, times, percentage, fractions, so on and so forth. 
Here you have um, a screenshot of cell styles. Um, so this is just styles you can preset onto there. Of course, you can do it yourself and design it however you like as well. Um, and you can see here that these are the standard office theme colors. So like with styles in Word, if you change your theme settings, the uh, settings here, uh, the presets will also update to match that design. Here's some more formatting. So this is conditional formatting, which is formatting based on the cell content. So I've given you a couple screenshots of tables um, and as well as the conditional formatting menu. So you can see the different types of formatting you could do. You can highlight the cells. So based on their content, you can change their color, which I have done in both of the examples. So um, if you look at the column on this one here, you've got no, ordered, uh, yes, and unneeded, um, and they are all different colors, right? Um, and so there were color roles attached. If it says unneeded, it should be this color. If it says no, it should be that color and so on. Um, then you've got top and bottom roles, which shows like obviously which ones are highest and lowest, things like that. This one you can see um, I have done a kind of scaled top bottom. So the lower the number, the or the no the value the money value here then the lighter the color and the darker as you can see at the top here um is the larger number so if the big number is real dark um little numbers are real light you can also do data bars which i've done over here these data bars are based on date so the more recent is more full and then as it gets empty um then it is more overdue as you can see here and then i've got some conditional styles here based again on the content same with this complete um, this column is different colors depending on whether it says at risk complete incomplete and so forth um icon sets is kind of similar to this you can put like pluses and minuses and things or arrows um, again just to more visually uh, express the information um, and you can manage um, and apply multiple rules, um, different rules, change the rules, all sorts. So I love conditional formatting um, because I'm a very visual person. So I find coloring and labeling all of the cells really makes a difference to me on how quickly I understand the information. Okay. All right, so cell formatting. Um, Autofill. I mentioned this earlier. It is a feature that when you use the copy, so you paste it and you pull her down or pull it to the side, that it fills those cells automatically. You have options when you do this to fill the series. So let's say you've got Monday, Tuesday, and you pull it over, it will assume you want to go Wednesday as the next answer and Thursday, Friday. So it'll fill in that series. Um, you can fill just the formatting. So maybe you made it look nice. It's all colorful or whatever. You want to fill that formatting, but you don't want the content. You can do that. You can fill just the content. Um, there's a bunch of kind of predictive options. So autofill allows you to copy that cell content around, and it can also predict your cell content. So really useful feature. Okay, these are the kind of main features for um, resizing your cell, like making the size of it how you want. I don't know how else to say that. So you've got wrap text. This will make the cell taller in order to accommodate something that's too long. Um, so say you have a long piece of information, but the cell width is kind of narrow. You could increase the height of that one cell to accommodate. So that would be with wrap text. Um, the other option would be to merge and center your cells, which would you cover several cells, merge them, um, and it becomes one big cell. You can also use the auto fit features, which is accessible from format on the home ribbon. Uh, these are both uh, accessible from the home ribbon here. And you can see here, you have options to auto fit to the height, auto fit to the width, um, and that would be of the content within the cell. 
So if you have like a tiny amount of information, you know, the number 10, and then you would auto fit to that, all the cells in that column would go to that. So usually what I do is highlight um, everything in the area so that it goes to the largest quantity or um, la largest value. Um, and then that way you can, um, yeah, you can see it. <laughs> okay. Um, vertical alignment and text direction. Um, you kind of hopefully know what that is by now because it's available in Word. Um, it's also available in PowerPoint. Um, so vertical alignment, top, middle, bottom, as well as of course, left, right, center, um, and text direction. Are you gonna turn it around or anything like that? Okay, tables. Obviously Excel is all about tables. It's a big math machine. So if you wanna design your own table, you absolutely can. Um, I had a theme turned on that was obviously a pink, key, purple, blue theme. Um, so these are the ones that came up when I clicked on create a table or um, these are the styles that kind of popped up as the basics, but you can create them from scratch, which is what this window is here. And you can see there's tons of different things that you can edit, change colors, all of that stuff. If you're interested in seeing me do this, um, I would watch my inventory demo. So the Excel um, assignment to inventory option um, for ITC. In that one, I create a table from scratch and um, I use this to design it. So um, yeah, you can check that one out. All right, formula versus function. So we talked about this a little bit. A formula is just normal old math that you have created yourself. So this is for simple, normal calculations, nothing crazy, um, and you just type it all in. A function is a pre-built formula separated into arguments that you put your data into and Excel will do the math for you. You can use these for conditional formatting um, and of course, it can use references um, and text values as it can um, a regular formula. So you can put cell references in there and it will pull the values from those references. When you want to enter a formula or function, you put your equals into the formula bar and then the name of the function, or if it's formula, just start typing in the formula. Here is the formulas tab of the ribbon. So obviously this is unique to Excel. You can see the insert function button there. The FX is short for function. Um, and then I've labeled some of the uh, items here. So there are financial formulas, logical formulas, uh, text formulas, um, date and time, lookup and reference, and map and trigonometry. Um, so a whole variety of formulas um, and different things that you can do, finding information, creating new information, combining all of it. Um, we'll talk more about formulas, obviously, uh, when you are both in the demos for the assignments, but just throughout the course, we'll talk more about the Hi, different Caitlin, formulas. I just have a question. Oh, just one second. Uh, sorry about that, just had a question to answer. So this is the formulas tab. These are the types of formulas available. We will be looking at these and doing more practical examples of them in the demos. So keep your eye out for that and check out the Excel demos. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next page. Punctuation. So a comma separates arguments, colon connects the array, um, and parentheses indicates that the math needs to be done first. So we'll get to that in just a second with order of operations. And then for punctuation, you need your equal sign. Um, multiply is done with the asterisk. Minus and plus are obvious. Divide is the forward slash. And you do also need to use your greater than and less thans. Sometimes you'll need to combine the greater than or less than with the equal sign in order to create your formulas or functions. Okay, we need to talk about order of operations. This is something that hopefully you guys remember from learning math in high school. Um, so I learned it as bed mass. Okay, so that's brackets, exponents, multiplication and division. Um, and addition and subtraction. So again, brackets um, is indicating that those things go first. 
okay? Exponents is um, a power of something. So like squared and cubed, you have your division and multiplication and your addition and subtraction. And there are the corresponding punctuation marks for those. You can also memorize this as PEMDAS. Um, I know some people are taught PEMDAS instead of BEDMAS. It's the same. <laughs> the only difference is they use the word parentheses instead of brackets and they invert division and multiplication to be multiplication and division, but it's just the same thing. So this is important. You need to know this if you're creating your own uh, formulas. Um, the main thing to remember is parentheses, making sure that you close all of the ones that you open and that you have enough of them um, to separate out the different parts of your formula. Okay. PowerPoint. All right, we're nearly through this, guys. We're going to talk about PowerPoint for a minute and um, then I'll let you go. All right, so PowerPoint is what we're in right now. There are two well, three unique tabs in PowerPoint. The first one would be transitions and transitions are the change between slides. So you can add sound effects to these, you can choose how long it takes, and you can also choose how long the slide stays before it automatically moves to the next slide. So you can see some of the options here for ways of transitions and I've put some examples on. So here we go. Transition number one, wow, amazing. Uh, transition number two, <laughs> transition number three. Ooh, so you can see, you can change the length of them um, and the style of it. There's more subtle ones, more obvious ones. Just play around, find stuff you like. Um, the thing I will say about these is that the morph one is really useful because you can use it to kind of shift things around. All right, so animations. Animations, instead of being between two slides, is on the single slide. So anytime something changes on the slide, that's an animation. You have three types of animations. You have, ooh, animations, wow, <laughs> two animations there. Okay, um, so you have entrance effects, okay? So as you can see, it's entering the screen, okay? Amazing. Then you have, uh, well, I'll enter the rest of them. So emphasis, just entering there. And the word exit also just entered there. So those are the three types. Um, emphasis is, doesn't remove it, okay? So it just does something to it, like I did to these, uh, to the icon and the word animations here. It stays on the slide, but it changes in some way. And then exit obviously leaves the slide, okay? So it's gone now. Um, and now that one's gone, bounce away. Um, this one's called credits. <laughs> I think it's kind of fine. Um, so those would all be exit effects. So your entrance effects are in green on the ribbon here. Emphasis is yellow and exit is red. So when you're looking at the animation pane, seeing all the animations you've applied, you can tell the difference. And then finally, we have the slideshow tab, which allows you to practice, play the slideshow, um, set up your timings, if you have subtitles, all that kind of fancy stuff. Um, and that is it, the end of my slideshow. So I'm going to head out of here, stop my share. And um, thank you so much for hanging out while I went through this nice long presentation. The slides will of course be available and I will have all of the things that I mentioned linked in the post along with this video. Um, yeah, okay, I hope this was helpful and useful. I am not gonna stay any longer, I'll let you go. And I will see you again soon for the demos for the three programs. All right, have a good one guys, bye.